so here's this premise. If a runner completes a race course, then the runner has crossed a distance. If we reject this proposition, this premise, we are committed to the logical contradictory, which is a runner completes a race course, but the runner has not crossed a distance. I don't know how this could be anything other than a logical contradiction. Maybe if we really abuse the term <laughs> race course to mean something other than a length, a distance for people to run across, uh, <laughs> that's the only way this can't be a logical contradiction. But the minute that we say a race course is a distance for people to run across, well then, all right, to say that a runner has crossed a race course but has not crossed a distance is a logical contradiction. Okay, so here's the premise. If the runner has crossed the distance, then the runner has crossed an infinite. If we reject this, we say, well, the runner has crossed the distance, but the runner has not crossed an infinite. Well, so you might be very quick to reject this one. It's, you know, you say, well, yeah, okay, let's say it's 100 meters, right? The race course is 100 meters. Uh, if the runner starts here, right? and runs 100 meters over there, right? There's 100 meters. Uh, that's a finite distance. So it has not crossed an infinite. But, you know, the mathematics here is sound, right? That there is an infinite from the beginning to the end, right? What's halfway of 50 meters? I mean, you have to cross that halfway. Well, uh, 100 meters, well, that's 50 meters. And to cross halfway again, that's 75 meters. And to cross halfway again is what, 97 and a half? No, 87, <laughs> 87 and a half meters, right? So you know, he, he, here's the fraction, right? Here, here's how it works. You start at, you know, at the starting point, and to get halfway across, you have to cross one half. Okay? To finish to the end, you have to cross three quarters. That's the next halfway point. Oh, sorry, yeah, three quarters. To finish to the end, you have to cross seven eighths. To finish to the end, you have to cross 15 sixteenths. To finish to the end, you have to cross 31 32, 31 30 seconds. To finish to the end, you have to cross 63 64. To finish to the end, you have to cross 127 out of 128. The formula is actually pretty simple. You just take the denominator, you multiply it by two, right? Uh, and so that tells you the, the next denominator, the next halfway point. And then for the numerator, you just simply take that denominator and minus one. Now you follow this formula and you can create an infinite set of fractions right? and without end. There will be a one-to-one -one correspondence between each fraction and each number on the number line. That constitutes an infinite. It actually gets worse than that. Right? <laughs> Uh, in order to get to the halfway point, you have to cross halfway. So you have to cr get to get past the quarter. To get pat to get to the quarter, you have to cross halfway. So you have to cross one eighth. Okay. And in order to cross one eighth, you have to cross one sixteenth. You have to cross one thirty second. You have to cross one sixty four. You have to cross one twenty eight. You have to cross two fifty six, and it keeps going. So not only do you, to finish the race course, you have to cross an infinite. To get started, you have to cross an infinite. Right. And this is just in geometry, folks. I'm not just making this up. This is just a clever trick that Zeno thought of, right? This is geometry. Between any two points, there's an infinite number of points. And it gets even worse than that. Take any two point, right? Take any two points in the distance, say one quarter to one half. To, to get from the one quarter to one half, not only you have to cross the one eighth, right? To get to the one, you have to cross an infinite from the one quarter to the one eighth. There's an infinite number of fractions between that one too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the mathematics here is sound. It's not off. Oh, Zeno's not just making stuff up. If you cross, if the runner crosses a race course, the runner has crossed an infinite. You, you, you don't get to say the runner has crossed a race course and not an infinite. Oops. All right, so this next premise, it's impossible for a runner to cross an infinite. Okay. Now, if we're gonna reject this, we have to say it is possible 
that the runner has crossed an infinite. And you say, oh, okay, this is the way to go. And Zeno goes, oh, come on. You can't cross an infinite. You don't have, a, you don't have enough time. <laughs> you have to keep going to the next step. You keep going to the next step. You keep going to the next step. Well, here's a little clue, folks. Here's where Zeno has made a mistake. Okay. Because that sense of infinite is different than what he was dealing with earlier. Okay. Take any distance, say a centimeter. Right? I can cross 100 centimeters, right? So that, you know, I have crossed 100 centimeters, no problem. But in order for me to cross, say, an infinite number of centimeters, I have to keep going. Right? Now, in that case, yeah, it will never stop. I will never reach the end of an infinite set of centimeters. But that 100 centimeters are crossed, that also has an infinite, but it's a different kind of infinite. The infinite that's impossible for you to cross is an infinite expanse. That's where you have a fixed distance and an infinite number of them. The distance, the infinite that you cross when you cross 100 centimeters, uh, that's not a fixed distance. That's an infinite divisible. So this is where Zeno has made a mistake, and he actually has made a mistake here. Right? Um, yeah, you can cross an infinite divisible, but you can't cross an infinite expanse. Right? That you can't do. Okay. So the error that Zeno has committed here, and this is probably one of the only times I'll ever talk about an error in this course uh, uh, with philosophy. The error that Zeno has committed here is equivocation. That's where you have one term that means two different things. And he uses the term infinite to talk about infinite expanse and an infinite divisible. But these are two different kinds of infinite. They are not equivalent to each other. In fact, <laughs> Well, if you start getting into mathematics, the infinite expanse where we're dealing with a set of you know, all counting numbers is smaller than the infinite of, of the divisible, even though they're both infinite. That's fun stuff, isn't it? So this is one of the only times that Zeno, uh, this is one of the few times I'll say that there's actually a mistake here, right? There's, there's a real uh, logical error. Zeno has committed the logical error of equivocation when he equivocates between an infinite expanse and an infinite divisible. Now, I'm not going to talk about the other uh, uh, paradoxes that Zeno comes up with, at least not here. Uh, so, you know, if you think that Zeno has indeed made an error with the other paradoxes, it's up to you to figure out where the error is. And if he hasn't found an error, right, well, I mean, sorry, if he hasn't committed an error with the other paradoxes, well, then he's found some deep problems with common sense, and common sense probably doesn't you know, give a good objection to Parmenides' argument. Or if you say that it, it nevertheless does, it's like, okay, well, Parmenides' argument results in absurdities. Common sense results in absurdities. You're just siding with common sense. But why? If you don't have a why, that's the abandonment of reason, not the use of it.